Hey, Rent to Retires, it's Adam Schrader here, and we are joined once again by David Van Landingham with the Rent to Retirement team. Today, we're going to talk about something that is one of the more boring things, one of the things you cover at the towards the end of your transaction, but still, you don't think it's boring whenever you actually have to need it, right? So today we're going to talk a little bit about insurance. And so one of the things that blows my mind is how cheap it is for rental properties. It's, you know, people see it on the, on the brochures, on the performance and think 500 bucks, 600 bucks, $900 for a new construction. I get those rates whenever I go around. Are you getting those as well? Oh yeah. I mean, the problem is, is, is you have to be educated in, in insurance kind of to know what traps to avoid, what you need and what you don't need. Right. So uh, you know, two different people could go talk to the same uh, insurance agent and walk out of there with a $2,000 policy or a $500 policy uh, just because of all the add-ons, right? It's kind of like buying a car and getting the, the $1,500 $1, uh, super ceramic job uh, that, that protects the paint. But, you know, when you go to a, uh, an insurance company or you call an insurance company and you tell them you have a rental property, uh, the first thing they start talking about is loss of rents, you know, putting the tenant up in a hotel if something catastrophic happens to the property. Never had any of those things happen over 18 years. So, yeah. you know, they're looking to sell you the whole premium package, if you will, right? Um, you know, experienced, more experienced investors like us are going to weed through that and go, nope, 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 don't need those things, <laughs> right? So that's that's a big factor. But yeah, when it comes time and you need the insurance, uh, yeah, you realize the value of that $500, $600 a, a year policy. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a must have, if you will. Um, yeah. And hopefully you never hopefully you never have to use it. It's like my car insurance. I hope to God I never have to use it. But <laughs> if, if something happens and I got a 16 year old now, so you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm saying, well, you know, that's not that's not bad. You know, I'll pay that every month just to make sure it's OK. Absolutely. And and that's one of the things you talk about all the riders that add on. It's kind of like when you look at your loan and you and you're you're deciding whether you want to pay down points. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to look at it and say, what's the what's the break even here? And when you look at a lot of the extras, like you were talking about the setting your tenant up in a hotel, you figure in most of the markets that we're in a hotel, what? 70, 80 bucks a night, maybe a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. just say, if you're paying an extra, even just five or $10 a year, or, you know, are you really going to have your home burned down every 10 years? You know, I don't, I don't think so. And it's not going to be five or $10 a year, by the way, it's going to be more than that. But, you know, you got to look at your, your break even points there. Mm -hmm. And it really, it doesn't make sense for so many of them. You know, yeah, and, and that's where you have to look at the cost analysis, right? So we have yeah. to look at what what is that policy costing us on a on a monthly basis? What is it costing us in cash flow, right? So what is it offsetting there? So yeah, these are things that you kind of have to dive into, and you got to be good with numbers or work with rent to retirement, where we can <laughs> go over those numbers with you and go, yeah, don't do that, you know. And and we we have a, a select group of of insurance providers that we work with that are pretty good. Uh, but they're still they're they're in business to sell and make money, and that's that's okay, right? Yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with capitalism, but we want to make sure that they're not being oversold. So we kind of educate our our clients when it comes time to insurance as to you know you don't need this, you don't need that. These are choices. If you want to do it, you can, but they're not necessary. They rarely come into play. Yeah, and you also have to remember, you know, they may not be trying to sell you too much. But these are people who day in and day out deal with the worst of the worst. So they're not talking. They're not talking to the people who have had insurance for twenty years and never needed it. They're talking to the people who their home actually just burned down. Yeah. Their tenant actually their tenant actually just destroyed the property. You know, they're talking to that one percent or you know point one percent, and they're saying, you know, hey, I just saw this guy over here. He needed this policy, you know, don't you want it too? It could protect you. It can save your life. It can make everything better. And you're like, yeah, but it could happen, but your odds are very, very low. And it's also like you were talking about when it comes to actual companies, it's incredible how much they vary. I mean, I had one, a new construction that I'm buying. I saw on the br brochure how much the insurance was. And I went to a couple different companies that I've worked with before and said, you know, hey, what's, I think the insurance on the pro forma said $500. So I went to a couple of other places and they were quoting me $800, $900. And finally, I just asked the builder, I said, who on earth did you talk to that 
gave you five hundred dollars, and they said, "Oh, this guy, you know, with the with a big company." So I called him up, and boom! Next thing I know, I have a five hundred dollar insurance policy in my hand. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, Zach and I have talked about this in a recent episode. Your network is so crucial when it comes to this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it is definitely who you know, and and you know, you you hear stories all the time from the insurance, and you're exactly right because I remember. Um, when, when I was calling, checking on some rates and talking about different things, they're like, they know all the stories, right? Because they hear all the stories. They, they're experienced with that. And so it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, getting a motorcycle and your best friend's a paramedic. And he's like, oh, no, dude, man, I, I saw a guy <laughs> who lost his leg two weeks. You know, and all of a sudden now it's like, I don't want a motorcycle, right? So, yeah, you're, you're talking to people that are on the receiving end of, of dealing with all those, those things that happen. So, I mean, insurance is important. You got to have it. But also the question is, is it always going to be there for you? So you have to understand your policy. It's not just about selecting what insurance you want, what coverages you want, what riders are in there, but what won't it protect? And we run into this from time to time. So if you have a, a renter dwelling policy and you actually read your policy, how many people by show of hands out there? Yeah, I see <laughs> no hands going up. Uh, how many people actually read their policy, right? There's more things that are, are, are talked about in there. Uh, that, that aren't covered. How about this? Vicious dog breeds. Okay. How many of your rentals, Adam, are right around where you live in Texas? Oh, zero. Zero. Okay. So how often do you get to buy to, uh, to check your properties? I mean, they offer to check it once a year. <laughs> yeah. The property okay. manager. Right. So if your tenant goes out and uh, purchases one of those vicious dog breeds, which we all know it are, right? Um and I think they just added this year chihuahuas to that list. Vicious. Wow. They're but probably the most vicious. They are. Absolutely. Uh, so if if somebody goes out and buys one of those dogs without your knowledge, because you're not there, and they have a get together and that dog bites somebody, who's, who's, who's in trouble? Right? Whose pockets are they going to try to get into? First thing the insurance company is going to do is go, not our circus, not our monkeys. Not us. Says right here, no vicious dog breeds. Oh, we're going to come after Adam Schroeder, right? Um, trampolines. I can tell you this. Trampolines are there as well. If you have a trampoline and, and one of your rental properties in the backyard, um, this has happened not to me, but to a client of mine uh, where they had a bunch of kids over. One of the kids got hurt, critically injured, broke neck, and boom, they went to sue. Insurance company right here. You didn't read it. No trampolines. I've seen no diving boards on swimming pools, right? So, all of these things in there, you have to know what your insurance policy is going to cover and what it's not going to cover and be aware of that. How about this? Have you ever had anybody, uh, any of your tenants, you know, maybe they lost their job or they're doing side jobs and they're a mechanic and they're working on transmission shops or God forbid welding in the garage, right? We've seen those things happen before too. You know, uh, does your policy cover that? If somebody's, you know, utilizing a, a portion of the home uh, for a business that could bring you know, disasters like that. Um, a welding torch in the wrong hands I, or even in the right hands, just under <laughs> bad circumstances, right? Uh, can make a mess of things. So um, I can go into stories, drug houses, meth houses, grow houses. Um, all of these things are not going to be covered if there's anything that happens. A meth lab blows up. Guess what? Insurance company is not covering it, right? Not your property or any of the five properties around it that went up with it. So these are all things that we have to look at and understand. And yeah, 500 bucks, 600 bucks isn't so bad now. I will say when it comes to insurance, it's also, you know, one of the things you need to really look at. And this is one of the ones that people come to me and say, you know, what on earth, why is this so expensive? And that is the replacement value or the actual value of the property. And this is one that, you know, David talked about kind of the worst case scenarios, but this is one that's going to be there. And it really depends. I mean, I know which one I prefer because the way I look at it is if my house burns down, I'm going to take the insurance and sell the land uh, and not deal with uh, reconstructing the property. But you have to make the decision then and there. Am I looking to rebuild this house if something happens or am I just looking to get out from this area, from this property when it right. burns down or if it burns down? And so you want to make sure you have enough that it will actually cover your loan and hopefully, you know, give you a little bit of the equity you put in it too back. But you don't need the massive policy that covers rebuilding it, do you? Correct. Yeah. And that's, I mean, you know, when you talk about, you know, 
our turnkey inventory, and you look at some of these properties were built in the 1900s, early 1900s, mid 1900s, and everything else. You know, what is the actual value of that property, right? And and do we want to replace it and rebuild on that, or like you said, we're going to take the check and and move forward? And that's you know that's a big uh, ask when it comes to uh, one of our clients. You know, asking us what what do we do on this? Because that, typically what they'll do is they'll they'll go to the insurance companies and get these quotes, and then you know, do I need this? Do I need that? And we're helping out with it. And then they get kind of confused on that replacement. Um, you know, do they want to replace it or, or you know, do they want to take the money and run? So that's a really critical step for them to understand is that is an option for them. And sometimes it may not pre be presented to them as an option too, right? It's like, it's almost like they're being driven down a path where, yeah, you, you really need to do this. Yeah. And I think pretty much the, the standard is if you just ask straight up for an insurance policy, they give you a replacement value. It's mm -hmm. kind of just what they do. And, you know, it's nothing against them. It's just their theory is it's a home. It burned down. And let's like, if my home burned down, I would want to, you know, build myself a new home, but it's also different than, you know, if my rental property burns down. I just want to find another asset <laughs> that's going to cash flow for me. And, you know, get out from, from that other one. So it's not like they're trying to scam you. No, you, know, you just need to, to look at it and see, Hey, why, you know, it's one of those things, um, just question everything, you know, and, and it doesn't hurt to go through and say, Hey, you know, insurance agent, walk me through this contract. Like what, what can I change? How will it impact my policy if I change it? Cause they get paid when you sign the dotted line. So they're going to work with you. And I mean, it's what, maybe a 30 minute call with them mm -hmm. to go over and say, all right, so this one, you know, it's going to cost me, you know, $500 deductible. Okay. What if I put it at a thousand dollars? You know, okay. What if I got rid of it? You know, what are the dangers of that? And then just working through them to get, uh, to get to your final number, because we talk about it on, on the show and with rent retirement all the time. This is just another example where it can be a win-win you're protected at a price you're happy with. The company's protecting you and they're happy with the premium that they're getting. Your agent is happy because they made the sale and they closed on it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a win-win. And that's, you know, when you when you go into it, if, if you're working with numbers and you know what your numbers are, where they need to be in line with your cash flow, uh, then you can kind of go in there and say, look, this is what I'm working with. This is kind of my budget. This is what I'm allowing. Even if I, I get bumped up 50 bucks a month, I'm a, or not 50 bucks a month, but probably equating of 20 bucks a month or $15 a month. I'm okay with that, right? If I can really understand and justify what they're telling me and why I need certain things. Uh, but yeah, just going into the whole premium package, here's what, here's what you get, you know, as an investor, you got to be a little savvy and you got to realize, you know, there's, there's probably things in there you don't need. Um, to me, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you figure it out uh, as you go along, as you become more experienced with investing, you know, you've got four or five years behind you, you've had nothing happen. Yes. Knock on wood. But you've had nothing happen. And now it's starting to sit in going, wow, why am I paying so much of this money, right? Um, it's like my direct TV. I don't need 219 channels. I just don't. I watched 10 right? of these. Yeah, I only watched maybe 10. So, you, you know, we get more experienced over time and we realize, you know, how to efficiently start cutting down things and, and those extras that we don't need. Now, some people um, won't agree with what I'm going to say, but I'm, I'm going to tell you. Uh, we use, um, and I'm not plugging the company, but we use America Home Shield on our rental properties. You know, I pay a uh, low monthly uh, with them. And then if there's a, something goes wrong, there's a service call, it's, it's a hundred bucks, but that's it. I don't, I don't deal with anything else. Uh, it's up to them to re repair it. And if they can't, it gets replaced, right? Um, what is that for an AC, right? Your AC goes out and whatever the problem is, they can't fix it. They're going to replace it. And that, that's huge. So um, that's just another level of insurance that you can go to. Now, I see that really valuable when it comes to rental properties, because I know that, you know, if my dishwasher goes out, I know what's going to cost for me to replace that dishwasher. So I can justify that cost. Now with AC, sometimes it's not always, it has to be replaced. Maybe it's a compressor, maybe it's a coil, right? We're in Florida uh, where it's just, God awful humid sometimes and our house is very efficient, but the coils can corrode over time. And when they do, they leak out the Freon. Well, Freon's 
freaking expensive, man. It's it, dude, it's it, it's liquid gold. It really is. Um, so the policy is, you know, they'll replace the coil. Uh, they cover the label or labor, excuse me. But when it comes to Freon, they pay the first ten dollars, right? And the Freon's like three hundred dollars. <laughs> it's like ten dollars. Gee, thanks, mom. You thanks know, for the drops. Yeah, thanks for the drops. You know, but you know, it's still, you know, it's very impactful. Um, I, I can tell you. Uh, I've had garage door openers replaced. I've had, uh, you know, washers and dryers replaced. So uh, it, to me, in my mind, it's very much worth it. Uh, it's maybe not for everybody, but it is another type of insurance as, you know, uh, property owners that you should really look into and decide. I know you've, you know, everybody's going to have property management, which is great. Uh, but what are they going to do? Something goes, you know, something gets broke. What are they going to do? They're going to call a maintenance company. They're going to call a repair service that's going to come out and look at it. And charge you probably two or three hundred dollars to fix it. So again, we have to start weighing our cost, right, and see how that affects the the bottom line and the cash flow to see if that's something that we really need. Um, I've just found it to be so useful uh, that it, to me it's it's great. The only downside, and it's the only downside that I can tell you, is it does take a little bit longer to get things fixed, right? So the dishwasher stops working, uh, the tenant calls property management, property management. Uh, calls me or calls uh, America Home Shield directly. They send somebody out to look at it, figure out what it is. Rarely would they ever fix anything right then and there. Uh, and then they're going to come back probably two or three days later and and fix it or replace it, right? So it's not like you're you're hiring Joe's handyman service. It's going to come out and fix it right there on the spot. Um, and we're somewhat in a little bit of a supply chain uh, crunch right now where you can't get some things. Um, I've got a friend, he's got a refrigerator that's, you know, it's got all the computer stuff, not a TV on it, but just about everything else. And something went out on the panel. Well, guess what? He needs a chip. Where's that chip? Sitting uh, off the China coast of California, <laughs> sitting off, to, off the coast <laughs> of California, <laughs> probably in a shipping container, right? So, you know, there, there could be some issues like that, but I find that it's, it's, it's pretty useful. You know, How much is that a month, roughly? Uh, the policy that we're on right now, I think it's about 29, 30, $39 a month. And okay. uh, like I said, hundred dollars, they have different plans. You can pay higher monthly, lower uh, trip fees yeah. and stuff like that. But we just found kind of a sweet spot. And I think we're, I think we're at 29 now because of so many properties, but um, yeah, I mean, great company. And I'm sure there's, you know, there's other companies just like them, but we've been with them for a long time. I've got uh, other family members that have used them for a very long time and, and they're great. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, you talk about how it may take a little bit longer, but the important thing for most tenants and for, you know, having been a tenant before, it's really that initial, that initial call when mm -hmm. they get out there. I mean, if it takes a couple of days to get fixed, at least they know, Hey, my landlord took care of me. They came, they looked at it. They're ordering a part. Cause when people here were ordering a part, they know it's not going to be there in five hours. Now Absolutely. they know, okay, they ordered the part. They'll be here in a couple of days. You know, yeah, it stinks to not have a dishwasher. It stinks to not have a you know, washing machine or, you know, well, you shouldn't be furnishing the washing machines anyway, unless right, it's section right. eight, but, uh, you know, yeah, my AC is out, but you know, Hey, they, they bought me a fan in the meantime, maybe, or something like that. And yeah. we'll get through two or three days, you know, yeah. with it, uh, and, and most of the time that's, that's really what it is. And, and, you know, I mean, yeah, we, we learned to go old school, even us, you know, we, we moved in here to our house uh, in Florida seven years ago, seven and a half years ago. And by the end of the first year, the microwave went out. You know, and so what do we call America Home Shield and everything? Um, guess what? It's like, oh my God, we don't have a microwave. We forgot how to thaw food. We, I mean, <laughs> it, how do we make popcorn, Adam? You know, it was crazy. You know, you're thrown into the dark ages. Dishwasher goes out. I'm okay with that. I can't touch the dishwasher anyways. I, I can load it. My wife will come back and rearrange it and fix it. So that's just yeah, we're, we're opposite here. My, I, I always say my wife doesn't know how to load a dishwasher. Yeah, every well, time she does it, I see it and I go, ah, wrong. I, I definitely know how to load the dishwasher. I just give her a bottle of wine. That works. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I think those types of insurances are good. Um, to me, it's it's really, you know, you have to do the cost analysis and find out if it makes sense for you. Um, you know, and it also depends on your property management, right? Uh, how involved, If they've got their own maintenance team, uh, then that may be something that's really, really not necessary. But when you get where they're just basically calling out, which is what America Home Shield does too, by the way. Um, they don't have a bunch of people that show up in, you know, shirts that say America Home Shield, right? They have uh, different uh, companies that they've contracted with nationwide um, that acts as that service call. So, 
Um, it's really not much different than the property management with the exception of, I think you can get a little bit better attention um, and they, they take care of you a little bit quicker. Yeah, I will say when it comes to that, the only thing, one of the things you will need to check is some property managers will charge you a little bit of a surcharge if you use an outside vendor. Mm -hmm. So just so people know, you want to look over your contract, talk with your property management. Although in this case, you know, it might be easier. You might be able to convince them, hey, you're not going to have to actually do anything. So don't worry. You know, they might say, okay, fine. That's no worries. We can just hand it off and it's done. But just know that some property managers, you're going to need to look in your contract and see, you know, am I going to be paying a 10% maintenance markup on this? And, you know, if you do, it's, you know, what, 10% of a hundred bucks. Yep. So it's still not, still not bad when it's, uh, when it's all told. Yep, absolutely. And it, and it really just depends too, the level of cooperation with the tenants as well. Usually the tenants are the ones that are most cooperative because they're the ones that are being impacted. So, you know, you call them directly and go, Hey, I've got a guy that can be out there tomorrow. Are you available? And they're like, Oh my God, yes, please. I don't have, I don't have popcorn. Fix my microwave. You know? <laughs> so they're, they're usually pretty cooperative. Uh, and, and then of course, we've got other things that are immediate, right. That need to be done. You've got uh, plumbing issues, toilet issues, what have you, you know, those are things that can't wait two or three, four days, obviously. So those, you just kind of bite the bullet on it and, Rotor router or somebody out there to address the issue immediately. Yeah. And another thing for when it comes to insurance, and this is something that, you know, if you tell them it's an investment property, they're going to, they're going to do it for you, but you want to make sure when you're talking to them that you tell them who your property management company is mm -hmm. because your property manager is going to need to be listed on your, um, on your insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you switch property management companies, you need to let them know. Um, you might also want to talk to your potential property manager. I know some property managers have deals with insurance companies and you can get a lower rate by going through them. So it's another way you can kind of see if there's a better deal out there for you. Um, that's just some things I've experienced in my time, but you got to make sure. And it will say this in your contract. They don't usually, uh, I found my property managers aren't too good at checking up on it and making sure that it actually happened but you want to make sure that they're actually listed on your insurance policy so that if anything does go wrong, they can handle it. Not you. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything else you think we need to cover when it comes to insurance? Um, no, I mean, to me, it's, it's just one of the necessities of, of what, you know, the industry that we're in, uh, you just grin and bear it and, and be smart <laughs> about it. And, you know, if you've ever, you know, got questions about things and make, just like you said, make them explain it to you. I mean, that's their job to go through this. Uh, and then you just have to evaluate it. I, and I think, you know, some of our newer investors uh, do kind of fall into that. Well, I'm going to get more coverage, you know, because I'm concerned about this. Uh, but as they go through the years and they see how little it plays, I mean, how many times have you used insurance, Adam, on your properties? I think it's a grand total of zero so far. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not always there. Maybe does it make you sleep better knowing it's there? Maybe a little bit, but as we become more savvy with it, um, it's like, yeah, I don't think I need all this. Right. So, yeah. you know, it's going to do what it's going to do at the level that I need it to. And I understand, you know, beyond that, what's going to happen. So uh, I think it's just something everybody needs to be aware of. It's, it's required. You got to have it. So, you know, get educated about it. If you don't understand it, call us, call your, your, your rep at uh, rent to retirement or, Talk to your insurance agent about it. Just say, look, here's my budget. You know, let's let's work together on this. Yeah. And I will say one thing I did kick myself about when it comes to insurance is I own some properties down in Jackson, Mississippi, where it froze and had a horrible, horrible oh, freeze and yeah. snow this year. And I had not checked the box on my insurance for sewage that cost, it was only like $20 a year. And I hadn't checked it. And it did cost me about two thousand dollars. Ouch! I'm not checking that box. Yeah. <laughs> ouch! Ouch! Yeah. Because uh, a pipe burst and had to get it out of there, and it would have been would have been covered. Wow. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta... I mean, that's, that's that's one of those that's one of those near misses, right? You don't expect those things, right? I'm in Florida. We've had cold weather down here. I mean, not that cold weather, but I mean, pretty cold weather for for Florida. So you know, we don't think about those things sometimes like, oh, we're, we're, we're okay. We're, we're, we're exempt from that type of event, but God, with the changing weather patterns and everything these days, I mean, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, <laughs> little things can add up to a whole lot. So Absolutely. just be, uh, be wary of that. So David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for uh, 
talking, making this boring subject interesting. <laughs> really appreciate it. And you, you and your advice to everybody else, head on over to rentsretirement.com. We can help you out building up your team, which includes your home insurance agent. We can help you find properties, anything you need. We're there to help you. You can see our inventory. You can schedule a call with one of the investment strategists like David and myself that you, uh, that you need to get started on your journey because getting started is the most important part of your whole journey. Rentoretirement.com, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching the Rent to Retirement YouTube channel. Check out some of our other videos, like this one, or this one here.